So LAM is the shortening for a very long, complicated name called lymphangiomyomatosis, which is actually a very unusual and rare condition, almost always affects young women. And it's characterized by patients noticing that they get short of breath which is a very common lung complaint in patients. Well, it actually takes a long time to get to the diagnosis because it's an unusual condition. And it's characterized by the formation of little holes that we call cysts in the lung, an accumulation of some abnormal cells, which are not cancer cells, but they're abnormal cells that divide and multiply too quickly. And their normal lungs, as you can see here, are black because they're full of air, and that's a normal appearance. You can see in this patient with LAM, that there are lots of holes that we call cysts in the lung. And the normal lung tissue has actually been replaced by these cysts, as well as some of these abnormal cells. And that's why these patients become very short of breath. You can see how much of the normal lung tissue has been replaced. So the care of patients with Lyme disease involves not just lung doctors like myself, but also other doctors, because Lyme can affect other parts of the body, for example. Some patients develop benign, so not malignant cancers, but benign cancers of their kidney. We need sometimes input from the endocrinologists because some of these um, cells may be sensitive to hormones. We were talking about pregnancy earlier. So we have a whole team of nurses, respiratory therapists, and doctors with special expertise in the diagnosis and management of these conditions. So we're excited to bring everything together in one visit for patients. And this will be something unique that we can offer patients in Western New York. So we don't have a perfect therapy for this disease yet. And there's a lot of research going on the United States as well as other parts of the world to truly understand this disease a bit better and develop new and better treatments. So I decided to pursue research in land disease really because of a bunch of serendipitous events. I was reading some literature from other researchers in LAM because they study how steroids such as estrogen affect land disease and my lab is very interested in estrogen signaling. And so I actually invited a LAM researcher to come to a meeting that I was organizing on steroid signaling. And we met and we talked and she heard about our research interests and then invited me to a LAM meeting. And really this was about four years ago and when I went to this LAM meeting I was so taken by the research and the dedication that these researchers have to the disease and I was also just amazed by the patients who come to this meeting and who support the LAM Foundation and this really just made me interested in doing more. So what we've done is we've tried to develop a model so that we can study LAM in more detail. The problem with this disease is that we don't really understand a lot of aspects of LAM. We don't know where these tumor cells come from, and since we don't know where they come from, it makes it difficult to understand exactly how to treat the disease. And so we had a theory that since LAM is found almost exclusively in women, and since these LAM cells look a lot like cells from the uterus, we propose that maybe LAM actually comes from the uterus and this is why only women get the disease. And so what we did is we created a mouse model where we, we modify uterus cells so that they look like LAM cells and then we see if they'll end up in the lungs. And what we found is that in fact these cells do end up in the lungs. And so we think it might be a model, at least somewhat similar to LAM disease, and that we might be able to use this model to better understand how LAM goes to the lungs, how LAM progresses, and then eventually, hopefully, we can use it to test new treatment methods for LAM. So I think the best way to advance patient care in general is to have research and clinical activities side by side because they really feed off each other. And so we learn a lot from the researchers, and the research are really fueled and, and given passion to research the disease from the patients. It's really very important that when you see a patient, we have more and better things to offer all the time. And I think having patients and research together really fuels that uh, emphasis. I think the, the other real advantage is we can begin to take part in clinical trials, which is a kind of a research too, and that's very important, as well as understanding the basic biology where big breakthroughs can come. And Dr. Hamas's research program really trying to do some very innovative things to understand why these cysts occur, why these smooth muscle cells occur, accumulate in the lung, and how we can better develop treatments. So I think the future is going to be very bright for this disease.